north of West Palm Beach. So we're not talking West Coast, California, we're talking East Coast of Florida. Um, and you can see by this map, there's so much diversity, particularly in my area, because of the Gulf Stream. And all of Florida is so shallow, and I'm still astounded that you don't have queen cocks here. People do I don't know why you don't, down. but you don't. Okay. But um, you can see the um, right here, how close the Gulf Stream comes. And that island is right here, the easternmost portion of, uh, of Florida. A lot of species come up. You know, from, from south and from here. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, you know, through Miami and uh, just this first. And they found that Lake Worth is an ideal spot. It's, it's uh, at the edge of the Carolinian, and I'm going to say the Sierra Um Could you repeat the name of the lake? It's called the Lake Worth Lagoon. W O R T H. L A L A K E Lake Worth. Yeah, the lake is named for General uh, George Worth, who uh, fought the Seminole Indian Wars in uh, at that time, and then also then he went to Texas to fight the Mexican American Wars, and. Um, um, I had a picture of him in one of my programs. He's, he looks like a dandy, but he evidently was a good leader because uh, Fort Worth, Texas is also named for him. And there's also a Lake Worth, Texas. So um, anyway, that's, uh, that's Florida's uh, um, pairing with Texas there. But anyhow, I went back to um, the Gulf Stream. And the Gulf Stream is the closest it is right in my area. So things come up and mm. just land in our little lagoon mm. and find a home and love it and stay there. <laughs> and, um, and then things come down from the Carolinian province on down and they'll be, uh, find their way. So we've got a great mix of northern species, southern, southern species, and sometimes they get together in the same, you know, family and and uh, uh, and make new species. <laughs> <laughs> so here's um, a little bit closer picture of my Lake Worth Lagoon. And um, oh, 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 okay, there we go. Um, so we're we're right there. And it's um, between Juno and Delray. It's on um, top of the Anastasia limestone formation. It goes from about St. Augustine down to the north end of Broward. So when I talk about my little lagoon, at least you know where it's at. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, clubs have gone to on uh, field trips. Don't expect to find anywhere clear close to the 821 <laughs> species because Vicki Wall went, we couldn't get in the water, it was cold, it was choppy. She only found two new species to her collection there. So it's, um, but sometime you go there and it's great. You just never know. I get the same thing here. <laughs> so I'm gonna compare uh, pairs of mollusks that are often confused. And uh, one pair is the Telenella listeri and Mexicana. The uh, Cyprius, Macrocypria, Zebra, and Cervus, um, the Notopectin, Fergosus, and Nodosus, and the Nevaritas, um, which you have a Nevarita on this coast as well. No, no, and a couple of strombins and a couple other little detailing things. I can't so, <laughs> Pelinella listeri has, uh, has often been confused, and this species down here. Is Telenella mexicana, and that is, if you look in worms, if you look in several books, even Abbott's book has it wrong. Um, sorry, Abbott. But um, <laughs> this is Telen Telenella listeri, and you can very easily see the difference. And if you see the same, um, this is Antonii, uh, which was the synonym of Mexicana. That's the original description of that. 
Now these are identical in size. I mean, you can't hardly get a pair any closer than that. And if you look at them together, you can see various differences. So this one, of course, um, this dry is fatter, has this angled ridge that's kind of not, not elongated. And you can see how much slimmer this one is. In addition, there's also um, differences in sculpture. So when you are looking at a couple of things that you're not um, familiar with, look at the sculpture, look at the protocons. Um, that's what all the professionals use. In gastropods, you look at the protocon. And um, if you're, any of you are on you know, the um, Conkel um, website or the Conkel um, discussions, I mean, some of the, I'm not one of them, I just learn and listen, but Harry Lee and some of these other guys, I mean, they go into such minute detail. Um, is anybody familiar with Marlo Chrisberg's site, Let's Talk Seashells? No. Okay. Well, um, I would write that down. I, I don't know how deeply. You know, everybody everybody has a different perspective of what they want out of collecting shells. And, and there is no bad way to collect shells. You get out, you have fun, you get with people. If you want to get deep into the science, you can. If you just say, hey, I just want this jar of shells, that's okay too. Or if you want to, you know, make crap or But for those who do want to get, you know, into the science, into the identification, um, Let's Talk Seashells is an awesome site. With uh, back to Pelinella Listeri, um, how long do you say I have? Four hours? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you can see this sculpture is kind of clear in these uh, ridges. In the uh, Pelinella Mexicana, you can see all sorts of little lines and wavy edges, and that's another identification tool. Okay, so then we also have this photo in our album. The hinge is a little different. The muscle scars are different. These are all ways that uh, the scientists identify shells. Now we're going to get into the good one, uh, Cypria. And uh, ladies, can, can you see? Oh, okay. Um, uh, these two are often confused. Macrocypria zebra and Macrocypria cervus. The zebra, Harry, and the... And the uh, Anyway, I can't remember. Um, but you can see these, again, are almost identical size. The, uh, the service, the deer cowrie, deer cowrie. Um, deer cowrie's fatter. The, spot, the spots don't have measles. This is a slimmer. So the zebra is a slimmer thing. If you look at them on the side, you can see again the um, the, the spots mm -hmm. and now hairs and here also the teeth. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at them, you can see um, the um, Cypria service has brown teeth and a little different configuration. The aperture and this is narrower with dark brown. Now, how do you tell the difference if they're live? <laughs> that's that's true. But um, Colin Redford, the late Colin Redford, taught me this. The Macrocypria zebra, all these little things, these are called papillae, and in there they are forks. So if you look very closely, you can see all the little, they're like little that each, each papillae is forked. On the macrocypria zebra, they are pointed. 
So that's one way if you're in the Keys, or because these these do uh, live side by side for some reason. Don't know why. Usually things don't. But um, you can see the um, just a pointed cone shaped capillary. This is his little proboscis. I was very proud of this picture. You can see his little eye and his antenna. Mm -hmm. And of course, as juveniles, they have a different appearance. As very tiny shells, it's almost impossible to tell the difference if they're in the bolus stage. Um, you just have to know what's what's where. So they. Um, now we're going to go to the lion's paws. A lot of controversy, and um, I was probably one of the grumpiest when they changed this and split them up because I love my lion's paws. Mm -hmm. um, but I had to agree that it was different. They were different. Sometimes this one is called notopectin and the dose is for doses. I like it clean and it's just simply a doses. Oops, oops, go back to that. Um, so you can tell the angle of the ears is one uh, way of distinguishing these. The uh, endosis has a squared ear, or a dome, whatever you want to call it. The um, rugosis is more angled. There's also a difference in the inner spaces, where the inner spaces kind of come straight down from the umbo. This is the umbo. And to the margins, it's very smooth. And in the phagosis, they're ledged. This is an extreme example, but you can see all the little ledgings, and it's got a whole lot more knobs. But some of the nodosis are very knobs also. So the um, showing on the map, this is a general, general description. Can you find nodosis up in Florida? Very possibly. Why? Because of the Gulf Stream. <laughs> so you can't say everything from Florida is phagosis because that may not be true. But you have to look at the angle of the ears. So I love this hurricane tra tracking map. Hope we don't need it at all this year. Um, but this is the general consensus of the area of uh, Fergosis all the way to North Carolina, and this is an Adosis down here in the south. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to do <coughs> one. one of my favorites. I got this from a shrimp fisherman in Fort Myers in about 1969. <laughs> And this is a live one that came from our Lake Worth Lagoon. Uh, one of our uh, Brenda Hill took a photograph. I'm very lucky in my book. I've got photographs from some amazing underwater photographers. Okay, now we're going to the Neveritas. That's the moon snails. Um, so we have three actual moon snails in Florida. We've got two on our side, and you've got, I think, two on your side. Pictures are still different. Mm -hmm. So you've got, um, this is, okay, this, okay, this is a Della Sergiana Patrice. This is on my side, in the lagoon. And it's um, very close. Also, this shell is found in the fossil record out of uh, Lewiston. I, I searched through some of uh, uh, yeah. the uh, University of Florida's archives and found this show. Mm -hmm. um, that's a live animal. You see the dark, dark blue eyes. Yeah. Um, on the species, this is a uh, form Patrice. Um, I don't know how you feel about forms. I like the idea of forms. Um, and forms on shells just gives a closer um, pinpoint as to locality. 
because um, you know when when an author names a form and um, he does so with the understanding that they can mate with others of their kind. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh dear. Uh, please say something. Oh, oh, okay. Is this better? I'm so sorry. Just raise your hand, yell, scream. Okay. How's that? I'm sorry. Okay. Can you hear me still? Yeah. Yeah. If any, if you, if it drops again, I, it must be my head. I got a <laughs> Um, stand up and wave your arms and I'll, I'll know, you know, do something there, because I you know, want everybody to enjoy this. Um, okay, this one on my post, it has the dark brown callus and it has this groove, deep groove, and it's also higher. Duplicata, if you notice, there's no groove alongside the um, umbilicus. None at all. It's smooth all the way through. And then yours, um, it's it's higher. It's they're just it's, okay. And again, this is Delacertian up the tree say on the left, showing the groove and duplicata on the right. Do you have duplicata here yes. on this post? Yeah. But you also have, um, so here's here's the difference, okay? We've got um, duplicata, so you can even see the difference. If you're just looking on the beach, I never knew this until just a few years ago, that there were more than one species. I mean, you know, you just pick something and go, hey, shark eye, yay, go to the market. <laughs> so, now you know, you can look at the different shark eyes. Um, the Gulf of uh, Mexico one is in the center. It's really pretty. It's got a darker color. And then um, then you can also see the height is different. Okay, this is a very poor picture, but. Uh, and again, here's the uh, back end of that. In my area, I have to watch very carefully. This is the meanest, nastiest hermit crab ever. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, the, the population of the Delacertiana Patrice in my area is very, very narrow and small. It's just a small area. And if I go to this lake, I see this nasty little crab, and I know that it's killed the animal. It will kill the animal. I found this, um, I think it was this, um, and I needed a picture of a live, um, live crab cock. And I picked it up, and here's this crab, and I go, well, I need a picture of him too. And then I happened to notice he had burrowed in behind the foot of the queen of the conch, the crab conch, sheared off the leg or the, the body wow. and made himself at home. When I, I got mad at him and brought him home. <laughs> the operculum was still in the shell. The operculum and the foot was still in the shell when he was occupying it. So oh. they call that lethal eviction. <laughs> <laughs> so he's killing all of the Patrices too, or the species is. So I'm not very happy. But anyway, now we're going to move on to Naticarius. Um, we have two uh, in our area. And if you didn't, if you didn't, um, no, there were more than one species there, you wouldn't think it. You'd think they were all the Camarina. But um, this is Camarina, and you can, I uh, want you to notice how pretty the body is, a nice red, and I found a cool one at Marco Island, beautiful body. We watched it bury in the sand and watched it go. 
Um, but you can see this one has um, kind of little lightning bolts. You also look at the operculums and the umbilicus. And each group of shells has its own set of criteria to determine one from the other. Um, now here's Ted Bayeri, which is uh, Peanut Island, which is my, in my lake, is the type locality for this species. And um, if you notice, it has square dots. This is not a real good one, but it does have square dots. And the animal is totally, totally different. Um, the animal is more white, which is a little bit of red, but you can also notice the operculum. You also have one over here on this coast that is, um, been synonymized with canrina. I do not believe it is. Um, it deserves its own species. And that's Neticarius vera. Um, and that was named by Frank Lyman, who is right here. Uh, Frank was a, uh, a shell dealer over in Lake Worth in the early 1900s, 19, well, mid 1900s. So I would, um, yeah, I would keep an eye out for this one when you're shelling uh, on this coast, and I'm sure you'll find it. You can uh, also notice the, the umbilicus is different, and the shape of the aperture is different, and I'm pretty sure if you find a light one that the, uh, um, that the uh, operculum, uh, the animal's different. And it's higher, this is PPL. I had a really good picture, but I just couldn't find it. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, here's Stravus, the two Stravus. You only have one on your coast. Again, on our coast, because of the Gulf Stream or whatever reason, uh, my little lake has both Pugilus and Alatus. And um, so this is the uh, West Indian fighting conch. The color is peach. The aperture is different. It's curved. Um, the young animal is smooth. So if you find one over on our coast, then it's got a smooth body. Okay. And if you look at pugilus or alatus, oh, sorry. Wait a minute. Alatus. That's on your coast. Mm -hmm. And they get dark and a lot darker. The, um, mm -hmm. the uh, upper uh, aperture is straighter. It's the, uh, the young is really different. Mm -hmm. And you can see all the um, lines on that. So there um, is a couple to look for. I imagine you all are going to wander over to our area sooner or later. <laughs> when you are. Um, this again is the tracking map for um, Pugilus and Alavis. Okay, so we have the West Indian one. This is the general range. It's found in Bermuda and it's found here in, Lake Wor in my Lake Worth. And the other is found from Texas. Uh, there's forms over there and up into the Carolinas. Can you still hear me? Okay. And this is from Marlowe's website. Nobody does it better than Marlowe, so why should I try? I just borrow his slide and give him credit. So here's um, some differences. And um, I don't know how long you want me to leave that up, but I'll just um, you can see the spines on the whorl uh, be uh, before the body whorl are as large or larger. Okay, so there's, this is the big one. Um, these differ in size, okay, with the body whorl being the largest row of spines. And there's a lot of other differences that you can see. It's usually darker. Yeah. Your, yours is very, very dark. Um, which I love. This is um, found only in Florida in Palm Beach County, and this is 
is found, uh, a lot of this is found on both sides of Florida and the Keys. And Dennis Sargent thinks that there's hybrids. He may be right. I'm just including this because um, he may very well be right. Don't know. Now we have this one is from um, only from my area in Lake Worth Lagoon. Mm -hmm. This is Strama Stiga Sterili, Horn Sterili. Um, it's got a whole lot of different things, but I like, um, in case you notice, it's changed gender a lot. From Stramas to Lobatas to Eustramas, now it's Ellinger. This week, I don't know what it's going to be this week. <laughs> Um, but this has a lot of differences, and I'll go through a few of those. This is uh, the Gigas, and it has um, wi uh, narrower, uh, narrower uh, spines. The, uh, oops, uh, I guess I'm going to do that later. Okay, I'll compare them a little later. Um, and one other thing is the jewel boxes I want to show you is um, the difference in Concordata, if you can see, all of the uh, little spines are just plain. There's no corrugation. On uh, the macrophylla, if you can see, these all have striations on each on each frond has striations. And that's basically how you tell the difference in those two, because those are often confused. This is a confusing group anyway. Um, I'm gonna come back, but we also have, um, I'm gonna show you some of the species that were named from our lake, just from our lake. A lot of people have worked um, in uh, identifying shells and finding shells, so, um, except for Viroli, which I'll show you again at the end, because I mix, mixed up my slides, yes. I have a question, could I ride home with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I'm gonna have a very nice guest room. It's not this week, so. <laughs> um, and when I, when I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> Um, so this is a form of melangina that we have in our Lake Worth Lagoon. I'm just going to go quickly through this. Um, this is form uh, Winneray, and uh, that was named for B. Winner. And I don't know if any of you know B. Winner. I'm probably Homer did, but he's probably <coughs> the only one who's gone now. It was named by Pichu. This one was named by Roland and Fernando Garcis. Um, and this is up Peanut Island, is a type locality. Trifora amicorum. This little um, weird looking thing is actually an apatonium that was named uh, from our area, uh, Lake Worth at Boynton, is a type locality for this species. Yeah, it doesn't look like an apatonium to me. It looks like a periwinkle or yeah, something. Right. Yeah. Um, this one was named by Paula Mickelson and uh, Rudy Beeler. It's a uh, Divera scintilla. This one is found um, in the hold of lamps of some kind. And I'm hoping one day Paula will come up and she and I can go out <coughs> looking. Came up Polygonum McGintii. <laughs> Okay, Morton Beach in Lake Worth is a type locality for this species. We've got 24 <coughs> type uh, species from our from my lake. Um, Hyatus and McGintii, and just lost <coughs> Poppy. That's a weird looking one. Cooperella Atlantica from Harold Rader. <coughs> uh, so Neil Donovan I was from McGinty, Maine, for James Donovan, who was a Palm Beach County member. Um, Mercenaria Arte, 
And it's the, you know, um, I'm sure this is gonna be synonymized sooner or later, but it does not deserve to be, it deserves its own species. Um, this, the bivalves, a lot of them are categorized by their muscle scarves. And this has a, a different muscle scar from the other <coughs> two mercenarias in the area. Um, this guitar, very small, six millimeters. It's later also. Uh, this one, I boy, would I like to find one of these. Mm -hmm. uh, found in uh, uh, Cayman Island and some wood. It's a wood borer. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, if you, I guess all of you pick up your pieces of wood to look in there and see what the heck is growing in there. Rocks, mm -hmm. look at rocks. Something you have on this coast that I don't, that we don't have because you have such a lack of rocks is the bivalves bore into other shells. I love that. You know, you can find find bored shells all over the place. We gotta work for ours. You just pick this up and there's a little shell in there. I gotta get a hammer and chisel and, and uh, really do some serious work if I wanna get into the rocks. Okay, um, Zaminita Pacheki. Um, this is another one that's, um, you know, I don't think the two things is, is um, there's always people wanting to argue it's not a species. This is a true species. Um, it's different. It looks like Floridana. It's made of Floridana, but it's like got all this um, neat sculpturing on it and a bright orange aperture. Um, this was named by Robertson, who's recently passed. The lithidium, very tiny, very tiny, eight millimeters. Um, this was even smaller. Pillsbury and McGinty named this. It's two millimeters. Two millimeters. I'm trying to find that little sucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another one. Carbon Turbo Raideride, named by Pillsbury and McGinty. Another one, very tiny, 1.7 millimeters. Incidentally, um, I don't know if any of you like micros. Do I see anybody that likes micros? Oh, I see a few. Um, I bought this neat microscope camera that hooks up to my computer, and it is awesome to work with and take pictures with. Um, this one, the Rikolinde, again, controversial. Um, it's been synonymized with fulgurans, but for some reason the fulgurans on my coast are, have big clunky, I don't have a picture, but <clears throat> big clunky ribs. And this is very, very fine rib and different. Um, so that's, authors do not recognize it, but um, I like it. This one is the rib in the day. Another new one, it's got uh, high locality. It's got like lines instead of dots. <laughs> Modulus Pesai, and this is again, different enough. It's been synonymized, but it is a species of its own. We have Anastema cocoliflorus, three millimeters. So much fun to look for. We also have um, Lobatus raminus. Yes. Okay, this is a hawkwing conch that for some reason never grows beyond about two inches. <laughs> a fully adult is two inches, and the Lake Worth Lagoon is the only, there's a few other places, but that is uh, where you can find those. We've got two nudibranchs type localities. And this was named for um, Constitucioa arenaria. <coughs> and this one's got eggs. This photo's got eggs. I'm telling you, some of those photographers over there are awesome. Um, and then this is named for my friend Ariane. Polytype is like worth a We have, again, Ponsbrella 
Blue Garai. And, okay, we're back to Allager Vegas, Viroli, and see the difference. This is um, actually my specimen. It's, look at all the, all the different, um, very, very knobby. And this is a normal one. Again, this is unclean. I didn't know I was gonna see this, but I just grabbed it off my shelf and dusted it off a little bit. So I it real quick yesterday. Um, and this is the normal clean pump, the top. And again, side piece. So here are some of my references, um, and I'll leave that up, but um, I'm gonna go with this one. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I, thank you. I, I, Are there any questions? Yes. Is it brackish water where you go? No, no. the Lake with Lagoon is um, it, it partially brackish. If you want to look on that picture or that poster, um, it shows the areas. And yes, part of it is, here's the inlet. There's two inlets, the north and the south inlet. Now, the top of the lagoon is brackish water, and it's definitely different from Peanut Island, and this is all fresh, or salt water. And then down here in the middle is, is kind of a brackish and uh, very acidic. And then down, of course, near the um, Boynton Beach Inlet, again, we have high salt content. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of variety and I think that's why there's so much variety in the lake because there's so many different habitats. And is it questions. muddy? Is it muddy at all? Like not at the lagoon, no. not at Peanut Island. It's not muddy. Uh, certain sections are a little muddy, but and then those rocks and um, the people have put a lot of rocks in, and that home is home to a lot of species, a lot of semadiums and uh, things like that, but the whole area is very diverse and you know we've got the grass beds and we've got the rocks and we've got the mud and we've got you know a lot of different habitats and so it's, uh, it's fun. If you're worried about walking, um, Peanut Island you will not have a problem. Although I'll tell you, I always bring a um, um, a ski pole. Mm -hmm. Go to the thrift shop. You and your friends split split buying a six dollar set of ski poles, mm -hmm. and that is absolutely awesome to walk with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, ski poles. Okay. Oh no, that's just the type locality. Okay. Um, I, I didn't bring my book in, but we've got, a, we've got 821 species of all kinds of things. Um, we've got at least 14 colonies. Um, I'm sure we've got both Cyprias. We've got, um, a lot. <laughs> Hold on. Yes. Do you have all 800 species? No. <laughs> How many? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I've never um, for my book, um, I took a lot of photographs at the University of Florida, including the little tiny micro things that they've got. They've got, um, uh, if you look down here, there's Tom and Paul McGinty right here. Um, they probably did more to um, enhance the species count in the lagoon than anybody else. And uh, if you're going to COA, I'll be expounding on the early explorers at COA. So, um, yes, ma'am. Um, the Epitonian, how did they determine it was an Epitonian and not another? Um, they do that with, um, with, with body studies. Oh, do they? Yeah, they, they went in and, I, I don't ask me, I'm not uh, It just that, doesn't look like I that. know, it certainly doesn't. And I would take it for a, a you know, a litterina of yeah. some sort.
sort of very wrinkle. Um, but that's, you Thank know, you. I can only parrot what somebody else says. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Were any named after you? Not from here. No. Um, I have one show that's actually a rename. Um, if any of you have the um, Ebola Paparacium in your collections, it's now Ebola Marshall. But um, no, I. You know what? I'm just trying to get through this stupid book. Fifteen <laughs> years on this stupid book. If I get through it, this book, then I can do research. <laughs> Why don't you leave but that chapter out? <laughs> leave that chapter out, and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get a good. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Oh, for thank, you. thank 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 you.